Hey guys, you know, I get a lot of questions from so many of you asking about the right process to ship to the USA. So when I mean the right process, people are asking me, you know, I have uh, shoes, what do I do to ship it to the USA? I have uh, cosmetics, what am I supposed to do? I have food, I have various items. What do you do to ship it to the USA? Now again, following the right process is very important, you know, because the US customs are very strict. You know, I have seen containers being turned around simply because the right documentation was not in place. I have seen containers being turned back because items were not properly loaded the way they ought to be. So you again, you need to understand the right process. You need to understand the rules and regulations uh, when you are shipping to the USA. So today I'm going to be talking about um, what are the things you need to do. You see, this steps are important especially when you are shipping in commercial quantities you know now there's what you call you know shipping uh, just a small item you, you know you typically won't have issues with it uh, you know you take it to DHL FedEx UPS you know they just box it and ship it but when you are a business you know and you need to ship in commercial quantities you know you have a, a potential partner there then you need to follow some of these processes so one um, the first thing I, I like you to always consider is is the item eligible to be shipped to the USA? That is the first thing, you know, because a lot of times, you know, there's a program I watch, you know, this is not a US though, it's Canada and UK, um, where they show you the number of items that are seized on entry into the country. And what is happening? It's because people are shipping in things that are not even eligible to be shipped to the country. You know, so the first step you need to, t the first thing you need to do is to be sure that what you want to ship is eligible to be shipped into the country. Now, most items are typically eligible, you know, food, uh, cosmetics, clothes, um, you know, furniture, leather works, all such general everyday items are typically okay. But when you have things like chemicals, you know, um, things like live animal, you know, you talk about dogs, you know, you have a cat and dog fur, you know, you know, you know, in the USA, they don't joke with that because because those are pets you know you can't be shipping parts of it and then you're trying to ship exotic animals again these are things that are restricted you know most times you need to have some form of license before you ship it to the USA you know alcoholic drinks for example you know you can ship it in but again it depends on the entry point uh, for such items you know um, so again be sure uh, that the things you want to ship are eligible to be shipped to the USA before you even start the shipping process now, the second question is, if the item is eligible, do I need a license? And if so, what type of license do I need? You know, you have some items where uh, you're obviously going to need some form of import license. And, you know, I'm not going to be talking about import licenses today. Uh, but definitely there are some, some items you need uh, form of uh, import licenses. You know, so for example, um, if you are shipping in medical samples, you know, you're going to need some form of import license. They need to have verified that the samples you are shipping in is okay if you are shipping in artwork you know some form of artwork uh, is typically classified as a uh, antique and you know stuff like that um, again there is a lot of piracy when it comes to artwork you know so they want to be sure that the artworks that you are bringing in has been approved to leave the country that is going into and you're going to need some form of license you know when you are doing that so again import licenses are important now number three is um this is, I, I, I wouldn't call it import license, but this is for those who are shipping food and cosmetics, you know. So food and cosmetics are regulated by the FDA, the US Food and Drug Administration. So again, you need to understand the licenses that are needed. For food, typically all you need is what they call a food facility uh, program. And you know, if you follow the link down, I have a video where I talk about virtually anything you need to know about getting your FDA food facility uh, program. Now, for cosmetics, you have what you call the, the VCRP, Voluntary Cosmetic Registration Program. Uh, most times they don't need it, and that's why they say it's voluntary, but a lot of companies you may be dealing with may require it. For example, Amazon will like you to have uh, the VCRP uh, before they list certain types of cosmetics uh, on their platform. So again, be sure that you have met the FDA requirements before uh, shipping food and cosmetics. Now, the next one is 
to prepare your commercial invoice. Now, this is key. You know, I have seen many people uh, pay exorbitant amount in terms of duties because they are using the wrong HS code. Now, commercial invoice is what the customs is going to use to, 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 to bill you for duties. You know, now, if you use the wrong HS code, you could be paying more. Now, for example, understanding the HS code is key, very important. And I talk about that in some of my, 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 my trainings uh, series, and you can find details below. Now, let me give you an example why using the right HS code is so important. Um, I could be exporting, uh, let's say, tennis, tennis shoes, for example. Now, the duty on tennis shoes that are maybe valued at $10 or less will be different from maybe those that are valued above 10 to 20 and different from those that are valued above, say, 20 to 40. I'm just giving you a, a, a wide range here. But the key thing is that even if it's the same thing, you need to look at the value, make sure you have the right HS code. And I provide a full training on how uh, to, to fill out the commercial invoice. Very, very important. Make sure you get the right HS code uh, correctly. Now, another thing you need to look out for is your manifest. You know, what is the manifest? The manifest is simply a document, again, that you stick on the outside of the box or the pallet or whatever it is you're shipping, and you need to be sure this manifest has the details of the items in the shipment. You know, one of the biggest issues um, you can save yourself is making sure the manifest is correct on every box. So let me give you an example. You know, we had a customer who uh, needed to ship items through us, you know, and we told her, oh, you need to have this, you need to have this. She was like, oh, that's a long process. My former shipper doesn't uh, require me to have all those things. So we said, okay, if you don't provide those things, we can ship it. So what did she do? She now went to somebody who just loaded the container and then shipped the items. You know, when the items got to the US, say they saw the commercial invoice and they were interested in some particular items on the commercial invoice and they wanted to see it now when they got into the container because they did not have the manifest on each of the pallets they didn't know where the items were so what happened what the US Customs will typically do is they will move that whole container to a bonded terminal out somewhere and they will offload the whole container. And the cost of doing that movement, the offloading, the check is going to be borne by you or, you know, whoever is importing the item. So again, making sure that you have your manifest on every single item you are shipping uh, is very uh, important. You know, so again, um, another thing you need to also consider is if you uh, you know, shipping food or cosmetics, you know, especially food, make sure you send the FDA pre-alert 48 hours before the shipment goes. If you don't, it could be a big issue. You know, now this is one area that I see so many companies getting it wrong. You know, you have so many people who are shipping uh, commercial quantities of things that require pre-alert. A pre-alert is just a notification you send to the FDA 48 hours before your shipment leaves, you know. And a good shipping company that understands the US shipping rules can help you with that. Uh, what else do you need? Now, again, um, the way you fill your commercial invoice, your bill, it's very important, especially the bill of lading. The way the shipping company feels it is very important you know so if you are from any of the countries that uh, have special tariffs you know for africa you typically have i think about 35 or 36 countries thereabout that fall under agoa sub-saharan african countries you know you have countries like ghana kenya nigeria south africa a bunch of these countries fall under agoa and what it means with agoa is what we call the african uh, growth and opportunity act it offers special tariff treatment for countries uh, whereby they can ship over 6,400 items duty-free to the USA. Now, if you want a GOA a special duty treatment, there are certain other rules you need to follow. You know, you need to have a certificate of origin and certain rules that I'm not going to be talking about here. But again, I treat a GOA extensively. It can save you a lot of money. So again, check the link below and you will learn how to uh, ship under a GOA. Now, when the items get there, how do you clear it? You know, especially when it's your partner or your sister company that is over there again depending on the value of the shipment you may be required by the customs to have what they call an entry bond 
you know, a bond is it's easy. It's simply a way for them to recover their customs duty if you don't pay it. So they go after the bonding company. They take the money from them and you have to pay the bonding company. The bonding company comes after you. So again, you may require some of these things uh, if you are shipping in real uh, large quantities. And again, be sure um, you have your clearing agent or whoever it is ready to move your shipment, your container, uh, whatever it is you're shipping, your pallets quickly out as soon as you have the, clear, the, the cleared, uh, uh, you know, as, as soon as the items are cleared. Why? Because demorage can be very expensive, especially for air shipment. If you are shipping via air, demorage can be crazy. It could even be as much as $2 uh, per kg per day. So again, watch out for some of those things. It's very important to make sure uh, you are shipping items uh, the proper way. You are following the process. Uh, and again, look, shipping to the USA, it's not something that, oh, you just carry your, your huge shipment to any shipping company. Make sure they understand the rules, okay? So again, I have a lot of resources down below where you can follow to learn more. Uh, and I'll see you another day.